now present the strange romance of Ellen Winters, the story of Gary Bennett, playwright, who suddenly and unexpectedly finds himself the guardian of lovely Evelyn Winters. This is Evelyn Winters, friends, and I just can't tell you how thrilled I am that so many thousands of you are riding in for my victory sword pin. It's actually patterned, you know, after the London Freedom Victory Sword presented by the people of Great Britain to General Eisenhower. I just live and dream that every friend of mine will have this pin. We'd plan to make this offer all week, but demand is so tremendous that we must close it tomorrow. And I want to personally urge you to send now before too late. Let my victory sword pin be your symbol of happiness to come and a bond between us. Thank you, Evelyn. Friends, I have one of these victory sword pins right by the microphone. I only wish I could see it. So glamorous, so breathtaking in its balanced symmetry, its rich, vibrant color. Dramatic, utterly the last word in fashion. It's over two and a half inches long. The sword is finished in the color of English gold and set with a gleaming, simulated ruby. This pin is designed after the famous London Freedom Victory Sword, presented by the grateful people of England to General Ike Eisenhower. The sword you've read about and seen pictured in the papers. It's worthy to represent that famous sword. Beautifully sculptured, a dramatic sword of freedom. Imagine how you'll love to wear this victory sword pin on your coat or suit, at the neck of your dress, pinned on your new wide belt. You'll wear it every day. You can imagine what exclusive stores would charge for a costume jewel piece like this, but it's not in stores at any price. It's offered by Evelyn only to friends of Sweetheart Soap. But you need not even send the Sweetheart Soap wrapper. To get your victory sword pin, here's all you do. Simply send your name and address, and only 25 cents a quarter to Evelyn Winters, Post Office Box 95, New York City. Write down the address, please. E-V-E-L-Y-N... W-I-N-T-E-R-S. Post Office Box 95, New York City. But this offer ends tomorrow, so please act immediately. It's good only in the United States. Now the strange romance of Evelyn Winters. She's a pretty girl, young Ginny Roberts, and a lucky one. She's to play a lead role in the new Gary Bennett comedy. It should be an exciting season. At the moment, Jenny should be dancing down Beekman Place, but she isn't. She walks thoughtfully. At the door of Evelyn Winter's home, she doesn't ring the bell, but takes from her purse a key on which is engraved, Jenny. I remember when Evelyn gave it to me. She said I spend as much time here as at my own home. Oh, Jeepers, that seems ages ago. Hi. Anybody home? Oh, does that sound familiar? Hello, Maggie. <laughs> Hello, Miss Jenny. Maggie. Oh, Maggie. Shh, darling, you mustn't do that. I just can't help it. Maggie, is it true? Yes, Miss Jenny, it's true. I heard it from Mr. Bennett himself. He came out to the kitchen, and I knew the minute I saw him that he had something important to tell me. What did he say? Not much. He said he felt he should be the one to tell me that Miss Evelyn is to marry Walter Barnes. Imagine. He must have felt as if the whole world was coming to an end. Yet he'd think of going out and telling you. Gary's so wonderful. Hmm. How can he let her marry Walter? Well, he says we were wrong in our opinion of Mr. Barnes. And that if it's what Miss Evelyn wants, he doesn't want to stand in the way of their being happy. But is it what she wants? How can anyone answer that for anyone else? It's hard enough to answer it for ourselves. I don't know. Is that a certain Miss Roberts who came in? Oh, hi, Evelyn. Hi, Ginny. How are you? I'm okay for an old person. <laughs> Delighted to hear it, Mrs. Methuselah. Any plans for today? No, nothing definite. Well, consider yourself kidnapped. Uh, Maggie. Uh, yes, Miss Evelyn. Don't plan lunch for today. Oh, all right, darling. What are we going to do? Go shopping. Walter's mother's going along. We'll have lunch somewhere out. Uh, anything you wanted me to do, Miss Evelyn? Oh, millions of things, and I can't think of one. Uh, see, I, I left a list someplace. Maybe it's up in my room. Well, I'll get it. I, I won't be going quite yet, so if there's anything you want to ask me. Uh, yes, Miss Evelyn. Come on, Ginny, I, I want to talk with you. Look, about this shopping. If Walter's mother's going along, you, you won't need me, will you? 
Well, part of the shopping is for you. Ginny, you'll be my maid of honor. Evelyn, I couldn't ask anyone but you. Oh, Ginny, please don't take it this way. Won't you try and feel happy about it? And understand, I'm going to be happy, darling. You know what I thought about this morning after I called you? Sooner or later, you'll be coming out to California. Maybe maybe Gary's play will go on tour, and I'll be out there waiting for you. Maybe it'll be made into a movie, and you can stay right with us. Walter's home is in Hollywood, you know. Gary said he saw it, and that it's beautiful. And you know what Walter said? That you put your hand out of the window and pick grapefruit for breakfast. When's the wedding to be? Thursday. You mean this week? Yes, Ginny, it'll be very informal right here at the house. We decided we'd rather have it that way. I suppose you know that I just can't believe it. Much less understand it. Well, maybe not, but neither do I understand all the things you do. I've marveled at your desire for a career, the number of disappointments you take, and you come up smiling to try again. That's all part of you, Ginny, dear. I want a different sort of life. And you must try and understand that. What about Gary? Couldn't he have given you everything you want? No. I guess you must know, Evelyn. I'm sorry, darling, but oh, I'll do anything you want me to, you know that. Oh, Ginny, thanks, darling. Now let's plan. <laughs> Jenny becomes more aware each minute that it is true. Cross town in Gary Bennett's Broadway office, his manager, Charlie Gleason, comes in. You busy, Gary? No, Charlie. Walla Barnes is here to see you. Oh, yes, he said he'd be in. You want to see him, then? Okay, Gary? Well, what are you standing around for? Sure, send him in. Yes, Mr. Bennett. All right, Mr. Barnes. Thanks, Charlie. Hello, Gary. Hello, Walter. What can I do for you? I think you've done a great deal already in giving your consent. I thought it would be in order to thank you and have a talk with you. I'm sure you must realize that I'm extremely grateful to you. Oh, forget my part in it. I guess I've given you both a fairly rough time. Oh, about the matter of Evelyn's estate, there's a question as to the control of it. Yes, sir. Evelyn mentioned it to me. I believe she said it was optional with you as to what's done. Well, that's the way her father requested it to be handled in the event of her marriage. That's what she told me. Uh, Mind if I smoke? Oh, go ahead. Thanks, I have one. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't make any difference, Gary. One way or the other, I think it should be kept intact, as it is, and separate from anything we have together. Well, finances are more in your line than mine, Walter. Although it strikes me as a bit far-fetched if you're to be entrusted with her life and happiness that you aren't given control of her estate. Frankly, I'd prefer to leave that decision to you and Evelyn. I'll remain neutral. But thanks for the vote of confidence. Why don't you talk it over with her, Gary? Oh, you can mention it. When I see her, I'll find out what she thinks about it. Gary, the wedding is to be Thursday. You mean this Thursday? Mm Mm-hmm, the 18th. Hmm. Didn't expect it to be as soon as that. We decided last evening. I see. I know that Evelyn wants to talk to you about it. As her guardian, you'll take the place her father would have had had he been here? What does a father do at a wedding? Oh, you mean to... To give her away, yes. But there must be some old friend of the family, her father's attorney... Their doctor, he was an old friend of Colonel Winters, someone like that. But Gary, Colonel Winters chose you as Evelyn's guardian. But don't you think that's going a little too far? After all... I understand, Gary. I I can appreciate how it must strike you. But I know Evelyn wants to ask you, and yet she feels somewhat hesitant about it. I thought I'd tell you. Personally, I hope you'll agree to it. I have a great deal of admiration for you. You're a swell person. I hope that we'll become friends. Strange things happen. I suppose I'll be there. When will you be leaving for the coast? Right after the wedding. I don't imagine I'll be seeing much of you before then. Or for some time after, perhaps. Take care of her. Don't ever worry about that, Gary. Well, I guess that says about everything. We'll be in touch with you. Thanks, Gary, and goodbye. Goodbye, Walter. Gary. Yes, Charlie. This is a heck of a question to ask you, but, uh... Are presents in order? I seem to be invited to the wedding. It's customary to send a gift. What are you going to do? I don't know. 
Charlie, have you any actor in mind for the part of Eric? What? Oh, the, the play. Yes, we're doing a comedy this season, remember? I think that in a way, the actor for that part depends on who plays Sidonia. But what about Janice King? Don't tell me she turns Sidonia down. Well... Why, any actress in New York could jump at that part. You know, there are times when King ought to be choked. Charlie, sit down. She hasn't made any decision for the sole and simple reason that she hasn't read it. Well, listen, I, I sent that out to her a week and a half ago. Okay, okay, but I was over there the other evening and little Janice hadn't read it. Well, what's the matter with her? Nothing's the matter with her, Charlie. But she isn't doing anything. Well, maybe that's what is the matter with her. She's just jittery from doing nothing. Well, would her highness like a reader? I might take some specs and go up and do it with gestures for her. <laughs> that would sell the part for sure. Now, she said she'd read it over the weekend. Well, it's nice of her. No way to put her in any trouble. Snap out of it, Charlie. Come on, let's give her a call and get started on it. Well, not a bad idea. Why not? Is Beanie out there? Uh, no. Want me to get? I'll do it. I'm sorry, I, I must have the wrong number. Oh, Gary, is that you? Evelyn. Well, did you say you had the wrong number? Well, I, I, I didn't realize I was dialing your number. I, I must have had you on my mind. I'm sorry. up slowly, not wanting to sever this unexpected link between him and Evelyn, whom he loves. Before him is a calendar, and all he sees is Thursday the 18th, her wedding day. It's hurry, 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 friends. Only one day left on the air of Evelyn's spectacular offer to send each of you a victory sword pin, a glamorous, fashionable, and lovely costume jewel piece patterned after the famous London Freedom Victory Sword presented by the people of England to General Eisenhower. Here is something original for you to wear, a fashion accent so exquisite, so downright lovely you'll wear it every single day. Dramatic, rich-looking, over two and a half inches long, Finished in the color of English gold, it's set with a gleaming, simulated ruby. Have it as your symbol of happiness. Now victory is won. Sit right down and send for your victory sword pin today. To get yours, just send your name and address, and only 25 cents a quarter, to Evelyn Winters, Post Office Box 95, New York City. No sweetheart soap label needed. Just 25 cents a quarter to E V E L Y N. W-I-N-T-E-R-S. Evelyn Winters, Post Office Box 95, New York City. But tomorrow is last call, so send today. Separated by Janice King and her daring forged message to Evelyn, bearing Gary's signature, and of which he has no knowledge, Gary and his lovely young ward face a future apart. The wedding is only three days off. Be sure to listen tomorrow to the next chapter of the strange romance of Evelyn Winters. Till then, this is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Sweetheart Soap, the soap that agrees with your skin. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.